What about uh, Godfather? What are some of your memories of uh, Godfather? I love that man. Um, it was fun uh, being one of the pimps in training. It was fun hanging around with him and, and all the strippers. Almost got me divorced. But Godfather's cool people, man. I mean, uh, he's another one who's just laid back. Doesn't, didn't let the business affect him. Didn't, uh, just let stuff bounce off him. Probably because he was smoking a lot of weed. Yeah. Um, that might have something to do with it. And I'll, I'll tell a story now. Once again, there's another story I've never told before. We're in, uh, we're in Buffalo, New York. We have to do a house show in Toronto. So we fly into Buffalo. We would always do like Toronto, then the next night come back and do Buffalo and then go on. Uh, and you flew into Buffalo, it was easy to drive across customs and fly in. So we get there, we go to the gym. Now you always have to leave to go to Buffalo about four o'clock. You leave Buffalo, go to Toronto about four o'clock because about two hours up. You gotta get there about an hour for the show time. So we get to the gym early, it's probably about one o'clock. Godfather goes, man, I got some great chronic. You want some? Huh. So, okay. You bow to peer pressure. Right? Take a little hit. Knock up my ass. I go, all right, Pop, I'm going to take a nap. Just come get me before we go. I remember Papa waking me up at like 4.30, 4 o'clock. He goes, all right, ready to go. And I was like, Papa, I, I can't drive. You mind driving? He goes, okay. The next thing I remember is sitting back on my bed. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. So literally, whatever he gave me, I lost the drive to Toronto. I lost going through customs. I lost the match. I lost the drive coming back. That's crazy. And I remember sitting in front of my TV on my bed, and I'm looking up, and it's like sports center, and I'm going, huh. oh, man, that is the last time I'll ever do anything with Godfather. <laughs> I don't, he laughed at me the next day. He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, I, I swear to God, I don't remember who I wrestled. I don't remember what I said to the customs agents. I don't remember anything. Mark Henry, what are some of your uh, memories and initial impressions of uh, Mark? Love Mark Henry to death. He's another guy I still talk to this day. Uh, I remember seeing him, and man, he is the strongest, I can't call him man, he's the strongest creature I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> um story of Mark is, there was one time we were in a, I forget where we were. I got two gym stores at Mark. I forget where we were, but we walk into the gym, and it's one of these, it was like a hardcore gym, you know, like, you've seen them where it's like dirty and dusty, and there's the big jacked up guys in the corner just going at it, you know, and so you walk in, and there's these four guys squatting. They've got, they've got three plates on. So they're, it's 315, they're squatting. Mark goes, hmm. I've never done that before. And I'm thinking, you never squatted 315 before? He goes, yeah. He walks over and goes, yo, you mind if I get in? And they're like, oh, okay. No warm up. He's still, he's still in his regular jeans, you know? And I'm like, what is Mark doing? And Mark's, he's stretching. Yeah, he does this. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> <sighs> and bangs out 10 military. And I go, and my jaw just hit the ground. He racks, he goes, thank you guys. And all four of those guys did like this and went, we're done. <laughs> and left. I mean, Mark is, he's not, like I said, he's not a man, he's a creature. He's hes part ape, part alien. I mean, I've never seen anybody that strong in my life. And literally, the few times I worked against him, I've never felt like a three-year-old kid, except for when Mark Henry grabs me. He grabbed me and it's like, Okay, I'm going where you want me to. Huh. Um, another Mark Henry story is we're in Venice Beach, California. And I'll, I'll never forget the gym here. Muscle Beach. It's the Gold's Gym. It's the Mecca. It's the birthplace of bodybuilding. You know, there's pictures all over paying homage to all the guys who've come before. And this, you know, the Gold's Gym is separated by, there's a wall here. And over here is like casual lifting. And here is hardcore. And over here is the squat rack and, and big benches and all that stuff. You know, stuff that Arnold's trained on and, you know, Mr. Olympians and all that, Mr. Americans and all that. So we go in and Mark's getting ready for some competition, so he's squatting. Oh, he's squatting. He's got, 
He's just boom, banging up, banging up, ass to the floor. Touching his ass to the floor. Perfect squats, right? The weight's racking up. He's 600, 700, 800 pounds, 900 pounds. He's finally got the bar. It's just 45 pounds packed out to the end. You can't put any more weight on the bar. All 45 pound plates. Yeah! And the entire gym at this point has stopped working out and they're looking at Mark, which never happens in, go in the Venice gym. No one cares about each other. So they're all looking. Mark down. Boom! Yeah. Boom! He's done it. Everyone's waiting to explode. They're like this. So Mark hooks one side. Boom! And misses the other rack here. Boom! And dumps all this weight. So everyone went, ah! Oh, fuck yeah. But still, I mean, it was just feats of strength. I mean, I've we were at a Hershey, Pennsylvania one time. And this is really early, like, you could do your match, and then you could leave to go in the next town, because we would drive 300 miles. So, like, we were in Allentown, or Hershey, and maybe we'd have to drive to Cleveland or something. So we do our match, boom, 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 boom. It's me and Mark driving. We get out, we shower, get out to the car, and we're parked here, and there's a car parked here right behind us. And Mark goes, hey, who's, whose car is this? He's looking at the security. He goes, I don't know. You, you got some keys for this? Huh. No. And I'm like, ah. Oh. Mark was like, you ain't going to Can you go check? So the guy goes in, can't find it, comes back out. I don't know. Mark goes, all right, hold on. Huh. And I go, he walks over to the freaking bumper of this thing. And shimmies it over. <laughs> and moved it probably three feet this way. All right, let's go. And I'm standing there going. <laughs> did you, y'all just, did, you, like, I've never seen anything. He's just, he's in freakishly strong. Were you there when uh, DX used to screw with Mark at all? I was there. Well, we had the infamous, um. Food incident? Yeah. Well, what are your memories of that? Um. I didn't know about it until after it happened, but apparently um, X-Pac had uh, um, done something to Mark's sandwich. I'm not sure on what he did. I've heard the legend, the lore, that he might have left a little present in it. They really messed with Mark because Mark signed a real big deal and hadn't done anything. Um, you know, and it's like, in wrestling, it's like, if you get something too easy, everyone else gets mad at you. So I think they really got on him. Uh, they didn't need to. I think they tried to break him to get him to quit, but Mark's smarter than a lot of the people think. Um, which, in that incident, X-Pac led to the infamous uh, DX parody of the nation in which X-Pac played Mark Henry and he talked about the sandwich and he goes, hmm, smells like shit. So. Uh, do, you, do you think any of uh, Henry's ribbing was racist at all? No, I don't. I, it, that's a tough question because I have never, ever experienced any racism in this business, but yet I know there's some there. I was going to ask you about the uh, Michael Hayes incident with uh, Mark. What are your thoughts on that? I think it is blown out of proportion because if you know Michael Hayes, Michael Hayes thinks he's black. Right. So I think it got, I think if this were the days when WWF was just still a private company, nothing would have happened. But since it's publicly traded and that, you know, and it happened in a very public place at WrestleMania where normal normal wrestling people were there and was out of the ordinary wrestling people who were shareholders and stuff like that and someone overheard it that's why i got blown out of proportion but i i think it look michael hayes is he there's not much racism in michael hayes i swear he thinks he's black he'll tell you he's black he'll tell you he's black or not and he's probably right 